cool Spidey outfit. Thanks. Where'd you get it? I made it. The Spider-Man that Jim Atchison created for this movie is very similar to the one he created in the first movie. At least it will seem that way to the audience. This second costume, while it has details that are different and the colors are slightly different, I mean, you need to be a real enthusiast to spot the differences. It's a great opportunity to, to, to have a go at something again. I mean, this costume was probably the most difficult thing I've ever, it looks, it should look very simple and slightly naive. Here we were trying to do something which was about really uh, an acrobat who had this unbelievable kinetic, you know, spiraling ability. So it had to be a very flexible thing. We went through a huge, long, circular trip in terms of developing the, the costume of Spider-Man. And over a six month period, we came back to believing that we had to sort of respect the icon. And in fact, the closer and more truthful we, we were to, to the image of Spidey, as long as it moved properly and it didn't wrinkle too much and it, the stuntmen were able to do their somersaults and the CGI people could, could recreate it, then that was the way to go. This time we're making 35 suits, and we have, we've developed a new way of making them with a, a, a sublimation printing process, which isn't quite as good as the silkscreen process, but um, we save a bit of money and we save a lot of time. The first thing to do is always employ people that are cleverer than you. You know, you're only as good as your, your own team. So I have a great assistant called uh, Paul Spadone, who worked with me on the last film. We've been working for the past seven months, eight months now, sort of uh, revisiting Spider-Man's costume from the first film and updating it and enhancing it and um, doing a lot of work with the color of the suit and the printing techniques. The pieces that you're seeing here, we have a whole rack of them, represent a lot of the trial and error of our development and research early on. Um, each one of these pieces is a silkscreen piece of the suit, and each section of the suit um, is hand silkscreened in New York by a team of artists there, and each area of the suit requires about six screens. A lot of what we did this time around was try and bring a greater depth to the color and a richness to the color. And I think that the, you'll see that the reds this time around have a, a, a real boldness as well as the blues. There's a spider that we redesigned, the Jim redesigned on the back, that now has a more elegant flowing um, lines that work in uh, more harmony with the back of Spider-Man. If we went with a wider format, He's even gonna get smaller in frame. I mean, the way to photograph him now is like this. And um, there's gonna be a lot of room on the sides of the frame, even for a medium close shot. Before, you could make his image much bigger. I mean, the problem is exacerbated if we went widescreen. Right. We're not deciding on that. That's the potential problem. The next problem is the graphic difference that we're now talking about, making, in this case, it, I remember it blended in exactly. It was easier when a shot had to break it. You had to cut off the legs. And occasionally that happens you had to accept. But in this case, mm -hmm. because it makes such a dramatic statement against the wider uh, weapon, it's, it's, so it's going to be slightly more offensive to break the graphic a little bit. Because we're saying it stands out. And then we're saying, 
but we're cropping it. Mm -hmm. So it, it, that's the second factor. Do you factor. want to try something this size, that design? Well, we're just bringing a smaller one now. That's just we're getting a smaller one size. But we'll see. Let's yeah. see if 80 works. Not bad. 75. You getting this, Scott? Yes, I am. Is this enough? 75 looks pretty Not cool. Bad. The whole, zoom back each time and see what the whole. Try 80. 80. Not bad. Sam, does that help your problem at all? Show me, show me a space with it. That feels big enough well, to me. Well, I, um, I don't mind it a little bit smaller than the 100%. I will say That's that. That's 80. That's not That's bad. 80. This is the new spider that we have on the front, which is great new design. And on the back, both of them are an applied latex. This is, the, uh, this is one of the first designs that came to us here at the end of the uh, R&D period. And from Jim's design, we produced molds which allowed us to produce a variety of urethane spiders in varying thicknesses. The favorite thickness turns out to be this scale, which is also the same scale as the surrounding webbing. Um, the benefit of this is now that the, the, the spider is more integrated into the costume. Instead of it being a flat printed um, logo on the back of the costume, it's now raised and it's going to tie in a little better to the surrounding web. One step we've gone even better beyond this is, and again, it only exists in a mold stage right now, was to have a custom metal mold made. And we've taken the spider emblem, but we've added the bevel surface all the way around the edge. So in cross section, instead of it just being a, a rectangular raised piece, it's now got a bevel. It basically matches the same bevel, the same angle that's on the spider web. So it's all very congruent now. This is the web separate from the suit. And each piece of the suit comes to us or like this, and then it is glued by hand onto the fabric, laid flat, after which it is all sewn up and put together as a complete suit. And the last time around, um, one of the big uh, uh, problems, challenges to figure out was uh, how, uh, what, what type of material to make this raised webbing out of. It had to stretch with the spandex, and yet it had to have enough uh, structure that it looked like steely, hard and tough uh, material. So after some uh, testings with urethanes and silicones and some other materials, we landed on foam latex, which had the right kind of uh, properties to, uh, uh, to give uh, Jim what he was looking for. This is, uh, shows you what the, uh, a, a, a basic piece of webbing looks like when it comes out of the mold. This is, this is the Spider-Man 1 technology. The improvements we've made uh, this time around are that we have, um, by using a, a backing on the mold uh, with a, a, a special gasket material, excuse me, and this is, this is a negative mold, um, we're able to produce pieces that have a lot of this flashing gone. For instance, this piece here, you can see, has much less flashing on it. Uh, and that eliminates some of the, um, of the trimming work. We have made subtle changes in terms of the, uh, the uh, elasticity of the muscle suit and the uh, movement of the false jaw inside the hood of the costume. The improvements that we made, uh, they're seemingly slight, but, but they're all about more about performance, uh, flexibility of the suit rather than the appearance. Um, the biggest difference is that we've separated all of the muscles into separate units as opposed to the muscle suit from the first movie, which had a lot of overlap of muscle material, which is just foam rubber, which bridged all of those muscle groups. Now, again, even though this is very flexible and supple, the improvement of doing it this way is that it allows more of this finely uh, knitted material in between to give, give it more stretch. So, so conceivably, well, definitely, there's going to be more movement um, as the performer is inside the suit. Um, it also allows the, um, the suit to fit down a little snugger down in between the valleys, and hopefully it will give you a little more definition to the musculature. Over here we have the uh, various incarnations of um, helmets. Uh, the idea was to come up, uh, as far as the understructure of the helmet goes, we wanted to come up with a uh, a new way, a better way to lock uh, the eye frames into the helmet, and we also wanted to add a little bit of flexibility to the jaw. Uh, so all of these were various types that were tried, and prototypes put together. Jim chose a couple uh, from that, and we moved forward 
uh, off of his um, uh, selection. Underneath this, if it was not the reveal mask, would go the undershell mask. And the undershell mask goes on before the head gets pulled over to give a little structure and design to it. And uh, changes, uh, these were just made for a little more talking. This time there were some changes to the eyes and how the frames go in convenience wise and look wise. The lenses, um, obviously they don't want to have the lenses on at all times. You want to make it quick and convenient to, uh, to put the lenses in and out. So the lens is a, it's a casted urethane and uh, a few little airbrushing things to it. And what it does is it'll go in to the suit, magnetically lock in. And uh, obviously between that would be the fabric. Another change that was made to the suit this time around was the webbing on the glove, especially on the palm, which was not there on the first Spider-Man. It's drawn in a lot of different ways in the, in the comics. Sometimes it's just a series of straight lines running across the hand, other times it's more of a grid, but what we chose to go with is um, this pattern, which comes down here and follows sort of the general natural shape of the hand. By the time we get the fabric in its printed form, to the time it's got all its bits inside and outside, it's uh, three weeks, it's a three, well, it's actually it's longer than that. It's three to four weeks, a suit. There's an entire shop that exclusive, that um, sews the suits and glues all of the webbing down. There's another in shop with its team of craftsmen fabricating the webs, painting the webs, fabricating the eye lenses, painting the eye lenses. And we also have another shop in New York who's done all the silk screen printing. So it's, it's a huge enterprise with a lot of people spending a lot of time and putting their talents towards it. I think I deserve a little something for this. Give me a 50 bucks. I could get more than that on eBay. It's about finding the essence and supporting the characters. And, you know, it's not, it's, I've done a lot of what I'd call the look at me school of design, you know, where you're dressing people in big flashy outfits. This is one flashy outfit that somehow had to kind of work. Looks uncomfortable. It gets kind of itchy. It rides up in the crotch a little bit, too. <laughs> 